What do Brock Nelson, Matthew Barzal, J.G. Pajot, and Casey Zizekas have in common? We're going to tell you, and you're not going to like it if you're an Islanders fan. We've got that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could be with us today. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We have got plenty to discuss on today's show. We kind of started this show off in the form of a riddle, but believe me, you're not going to like the answer to it. Right now, the Islanders off to a two and four start. And well, before we get to that, if you've got something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future show, feel free to send us an email. The email address lockedonislanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is. That's on your mind. You could also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, N Y R V S N Y I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So follow me on Twitter for instant insight and analysis. And it's always great to interact with fans at game time. And anytime. So feel free to make a comment and get in touch with me on Twitter. And uh, always great to talk a little Islanders hockey. Let's get down to business. We mentioned the four players Brock Nelson, Matthew Barzal, JG Pajot, Casey Sezikis. What do they all have in common right now? Well, through six games, those are the Islanders' four centers. And combined, they have zero goals this year. That's right. The Islanders, four centers on their depth chart, have yet to tally a single goal. Now, look, Brock Nelson, six assists in six games. Same for Matthew Barzal. Uh, Casey Zizek is is scoreless. No points in six games, although he is a plus two. And J.G. Pajot has two assists and is a minus three in six games, but I thought about it and, you know, the New York Islanders right now to have through six games, your four centers have yet to score a goal. That is not an acceptable statistics uh, st- statistic. And yeah, six games is a fairly short Sample size. It's a small sample size, but you've got to do better than that. And, you know, this team, we've said it before, they need to be better offensively. And, you know, their two wins, they scored 12 goals in the two wins, in the four losses. They have scored seven goals. Big, big difference there in goals per game. Six goals per game when you win. Three goals a game when you don't. And they're just not getting the offense they need up and down this lineup. And we've seen Lane Lambert. And again, this is only six games into his head coaching tenure. But he's already trying to figure out what he can do to get this team a little bit of a spark. And, you know, he's mixing up the lines. We opened up the game against Florida on Sunday. Barzal, Parise, and Bailey. Nelson, Lee, and Wallstrom. Pajot, Johnston, and Palmieri. Sezikis, Martin, and Clutterbuck. Right now... Sezekis, Martin, and Clutterbuck 
that's the only line that seems to be etched in stone. And you have Bavillier sitting. You had Bailey sitting on Saturday. You had, you know, right now, Kiefer Bellows has been sitting. You have Nikita Sashnikov, who's been in the lineup for two games, out of the lineup for four. Wallstrom was hurt early. He missed some time. There is not a lot of continuity here. And I think the Islanders have two fundamental problems that they're going to need to overcome in order to get the offense to where they want it to go. And remember, you know, those 12 goals in the two games that they won came against two teams that are struggling with a rebuild. The Ducks, who are a little further along in their rebuild than San Jose, and the Sharks, who a lot of people have speculated coming into the season, they'll be one of the teams in the sweepstakes for the top draft pick next year. You have got to do better. So the two things this team still lacks is a sniper and team speed overall. And you go up and down this lineup. Out of the 12 forwards that the Islanders dressed, other than Matthew Barzal, I don't think any of them have what we would call elite speed. Anthony Bavillier comes close. Look, Casey Sezikis is capable of a burst of speed. He can, you know, do some things with his speed, but he is not considered a fast, offensive-minded guy. J.G. Pajot, also capable on occasion of a good burst or two. But other than Barzal and Bavillier, the forwards on this roster do not have enough speed. And, you know, we heard the Islanders mention that after their loss to the Devils. And, you know, here's here's the, the, the crazy thing. The Islanders do not have a, an offense right now that is just getting the job done. They're just not doing it. How many, here, here is a question, natural stat trick, which is a great place for advanced statistics. Looking at the Sunday game against Florida, you know how many high danger chances the Islanders had in the entire game, according to natural stat trick? I'm going to do my best Count Von Count imitation for you Sesame Street fans. One, one really good scoring chance. Ah, ah, ah. One, one, one high danger scoring chance in the game. And it was a shot that went wide by Noah Dobson in the third period, seven minutes into the third period. The Islanders faced two backup goalies over the weekend and lost both games. And Spencer Knight had an easy W. You cannot be that easy to play against and hope to win consistently in this league. And in 2022, the NHL is a game largely built and based on speed. And, you know, the Islanders right now, five on five, not generating anything offensively. And Lane Lambert, you know, basically sticking with his gun, saying there's no concern, the right pieces are here. It's just a matter of generating chemistry. And if things are not going the way we want to, we have to do something in terms of moving our guys around. They understand that. I thought we generated some stuff when we started moving people around today. I don't think they generated very much after watching that game again. But there's more to it than chemistry. I just don't think right now this team has all the pieces it needs to be a consistent goal-scoring team. The lack of speed and the lack of finishers and the fact that you got Palmieri and Parise and two players who are, unfortunately, it seems, past their prime, still considered top six forwards. 
Bavillier, who's never proven he could be a legitimate top six forward, has been getting top six time. Uh, Bailey, who probably should be a third liner at this point in his career, still getting top six time. It's not just chemistry. There needs to be more speed and more scoring in this lineup, or we may have a repeat of what we had last season. We have got more to discuss on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We will talk about your questions and try to answer them. You've got some good ones after the two games over the weekend. Let's see if we can uh, shed some light on the questions you've asked. All that, plus our Islanders birthday of the day, uh, a forward who was with the Islanders in the late 80s and into the early 90s. We've got that and a whole lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Our next partner has a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because I'm not a great pill taker and I hate taking so many different pills and supplements in order to maintain my nutrition. Well, what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adoptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. And it's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and Five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Want to thank you again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. Now make your second listen game to game NHL every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every contest from across the National Hockey League with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So let's get to your questions right now. And we'll start with our friend Charlie. He has given us some emails before. Uh, He says, Gil... Is Lou going to stand around waiting for something to somehow turn around? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Einstein. He goes on to question the benching of Sallow and then basically says, it seems that Lou didn't understand this forward group outside of Lee, Barzal, Nelson, Pajot, Parise, Casey, Clutter, and Martin is dog poop. Everyone should be available in a trade, especially Wallstrom, who's always hurt and basically can shoot, and that's it, and Bavillier. Package these guys with picks and get a scorer, then fill in with Holmstrom, Ratu, and Dufour. The season will be over soon. I assume Lou is aware of this. Maybe not. There seems to be a lot of guys in charge these days that aren't. A lot of guys in this forward group feel zero urgency. It's ugly. Gil, not even you can pull positives out of the last three games. If I was Lane, I wouldn't be so polite on these guys. I'm sure Barry was telling Lou change was needed. Maybe Lou didn't appreciate someone telling him the truth. Be bold. Do something to spark and change the team's trajectory. Put players through waivers to see if they can reduce salary, if nothing else. This is sad. More like pathetic. Charlie, uh, I want to thank you for the email. I know you're frustrated. And I think a lot of fans are frustrated. And part of the frustration is, you know, you lose three straight. You're two and four. And now you got three games coming up against elite teams. The Rangers, who were in the final four last year. The Hurricane, 
who won the division last year, and both of those teams, those are the two favorites to win the Metropolitan Division this year, the Hurricanes and the Rangers. And then the, the defending Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche. So the next three games are going to be really difficult for this Islanders team. And look, I, I understand, and I think we've been saying all offseason that this team needs to make changes, that this team needs to find a goal scorer and get some speed and improve this roster somehow. It didn't happen in the offseason. The only hockey deal they made was trading their number one pick for Alexander Romanov. Good pickup. They needed the defenseman, no question, but the goal scorer, still not there. And I think the question becomes, how long do you give Lane Lambert the chance to say, okay, you've tried all these different line combinations, you've benched different players, we got to do something more. This, this team last year was out of it by American Thanksgiving after the 0-8-3 and run with COVID and, and, and all the road games and everything else. And then it was so hard to catch up. You can't have this three-game losing streak become a six-game losing streak, and all of a sudden you're in trouble. I think Lou will give it a little bit more time. The question is, how much more time? And I agree, this team needs upgrades, but at what cost and to what aim? I don't know if you're ready to do a complete rebuild yet. I don't know what deals you can make and what can you can get in return for who's on your roster. So we'll keep an eye on that situation. And again, thank you. I, I, I understand the frustration. The next email is from Kyle in uh, California. Kyle says, hi, Gil. Uh, I'm a big fan of the show and I listen every morning. Before the preseason started, I didn't really want to hate any of the decisions Lou uh, had made, like not adding another winger for Barzal uh, to play off or getting a fast skater. I thought it was still too early uh, to tell and maybe something that he sees that I don't see. But the game against the Devils was especially hard to watch. It really showed just how slow. They are as a team, especially all the times when they would dump the puck into the offensive zone and just weren't fast enough to recover it. Is there any way they can improve speed and agility by bringing up some of the young guys from Bridgeport? Or are we going to be in trouble every time we go up against a faster, more offensive team? Thanks, and let's go Islanders, Kyle. Kyle, first of all, thank you very much for the email and for the kind words. And I think your question is similar. But team speed is definitely an issue. If you watched the Stanley Cup final, and those are certainly, if not the two best teams, Colorado and Tampa Bay, they are among the top three or four teams in the league. I think they are the two best teams, but you want to argue someone else belongs in that discussion. Nobody's going to have those two teams outside the top five, okay? The, the, the comparison of the speed and skill level between the Islanders and the Avalanche and the Islanders and the Lightning is significant. And I think the Islanders do need more speed to compete over the long haul. Speed and scoring. The question is, can they get it? Or, you know, as you said, Kyle, I, I mean... Do they go down to Bridgeport and bring up the young guys? If they're going to go that route, I don't think they do it until at least January or February. And only if this team is really, really out of it. I don't think they want to rush the kids. But I don't know if they have enough speed, enough talent, enough scoring ability on this roster now to be competitive with the best teams in the league. So, Kyle, thank you so much for the email. Really appreciate it. Um, and please, again, listeners, feel free to email or to comment on our YouTube channel and uh, hit me up on Twitter on a DM or, or just, uh, you know, let me know your question and I'm happy to read it 
on the show and discuss whatever it is that's on your mind, as long as it's Islanders related. We've got more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Our Islanders birthday of the day. We're a couple of days early. A native of Humboldt, Saskatchewan, who played for the Islanders in the late 80s and into the early 90s. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got that and more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And we're a couple of days early on this one. We're two days early. So Thursday will be the 56th birthday of former Islanders forward Brad Lauer. Lauer, a big guy for the 80s, six feet, 210 pounds, second round pick of the Islanders, 34th overall back in 1985, had a couple of 30 plus goal seasons for the Regina Pats in the Western League and juniors, and joined the Islanders full-time in 86-87 scoring seven goals and 21 points in 61 games. Had his best season with the Isles the following year, 87-88, 17 goals, 35 points in 69 games. Stayed with the Isles through the 91-92 season when he was dealt to the Blackhawks. Later played for the Senators and Penguins before finishing his career in the minors, the IHL. Uh, Last skated professionally in Britain for the Sheffield Steelers in 2001-2002, 323 career NHL games for Brad Lauer, 44 goals, 111 points, 218 penalty minutes, add seven goals and 12 points in 34 playoff games, 15 of those 34 coming with your New York Islanders. And Brad Lauer went on to become a coach. Uh, in the Western League initially, was an assistant, and then in the AHL, uh, and then in the NHL, he was an assistant with the Ottawa Senators, the Anaheim Ducks, the Tampa Bay Lightning, was the head coach and won uh, with the Edmonton Oil Oil Kings of the Western League last year, and this year is an assistant with the Winnipeg Jets. So Brad Lauer still active in hockey, even you know, 20 years roughly after his playing career came to an end. We're going to go back in time and look at one of Brad Lauer's better games as an Islander. We take you back to February 5th, 1988 at the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland. Islanders visiting the Capitals in a Patrick Division matchup. Billy Smith, the Hall of Famer, in goal for the Islanders while Pete Peters is the netminder for Washington. And it was the Islanders getting on the board first. Greg Gilbert, his ninth unassisted, just two minutes, 29 seconds into the game. Isles quickly up one to nothing. But Tomas Janssen is off for hooking. Islanders trying to kill a penalty. And Dale Hunter, one of the least popular players, uh, opponents really in Islanders history, Gets his 16th, Mikhail Pavon- Michael Pavanka and Scott Stevens with the assist at 8:31, Tie game, 1-1. One and one. Pete Peters, the Capitals goalie, called for unsportsmanlike conduct, and the Islanders' power play cashes in. Brian Trottier, his 18th from Miko Makala and Pat LaFontaine at 17:04, Isles up 2-1 to one after the first period. In the second, the Islanders' power play goes to work again. The Caps are called for too many men on the ice. And our Islanders' birthday of the day, Brad Lauer pots his 10th of the year on the power play. Steve Conroy and Tomas Janssen with the assists at six minutes even. Isles up three to one. Dave Christian, member of the 1980 Miracle on Ice Olympic team. He scores his 26th for the Caps. Dale Hunter and Scott Stevens again with the helpers at 1341. That makes it three to two. That's where we stood when the teams went into the dressing room for the second intermission. But in the third, the Caps tried, couldn't beat Billy Smith and Brad Lauer, our Islanders' birthday of the day, gets the clinching goal, his 11th of the year, second of the game, at 17.52, the setup from Dennis Potvan. Islanders beat the Capitals by a score of four to two, 32 saves. For Billy Smith, the Capitals outshoot the Islanders 34-33 in a pretty even game. But for Brad Lauer, 
our Islanders' birthday of the day. Two goals. He was a plus one. One came at even strength, one on the power play. He had four shots on goal. Steve Conroy led all Islanders players with it. six. And Lauer had the game-winning goal as well. So for Brad Lauer, a nice performance there. He, and we're a couple of days early, but he is our Islanders' birthday of the day. Wanted to just briefly touch on one more thing that I think is just a, a nice little tidbit. The Islanders going to name the press level at the UBS arena after Stan Fischler. And I, I think that's a great honor. I, I've known Stan for a long time. Great guy, does a lot for hockey. Was first a part of the Islanders telecast way back in 1974, working for Sports Channel, MSG Network, the Hockey News, writing for many different publications. And of course, he has his own newsletter, still writing for Islanders.com and the Hockey News. And just, you know, he's been covering the Islanders since the beginning, and he really has been a part of the culture here. Uh, Fischler quoted as saying, it's very surreal. It's a combination of incredible. I'm very grateful. And there's a Hebrew expression, dayenu, which means sufficient. I'm getting this thing, this honor for basically doing what's been fun for me for more than half a century. So congratulations to Stan Fischler, member of the Hockey Hall of Fame as a uh, media member and just uh, a great part of the culture of the New York Islanders uh, as a member of the media since day one. So congratulations to Stan on an honor very well deserved. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out Locked On Sports Today, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Tomorrow, we will have our farm report. We will preview the game against the Rangers and a whole lot more. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.